this particular session of the interorganizational relationship, uh, we will continuing with the uh, what are the difference uh, are the from the adversaries uh, to the partners are there, and the changing characteristics of the interorganizational relationships, uh, population ecology, uh, what hinders the adaptation and the organizational form and niche, process of ecological change, institutionalism, institutionalism adaptation and the as usual the case study, research paper, book recommendations and the references will be there. So, earlier we have talked about that is the how the competitors they can uh, make the collaboration uh, with the uh, with each other and as a result uh, the co-optation strategy that can be adopted. And whenever there will be the co-optation strategy then there will be the organization structures will be affected because then you because of the adversaries uh, you have to take certain decisions. What are those decisions and uh, how from the adversaries to the partners uh, uh, this process continues that we will see in this particular session. So, fresh flowers are blooming on the battle scarred uh, landscape where the uh, once the bitter rivalries once took place is there. So, therefore, because of this competition uh, there were the some bitter experiences or uh, there were be certain decisions which were not favorable to the each other. Then in that case, but now when we are talking about that converting that adversaries to the partners, uh, the, for example, in North America collaboration among the organizations uh, initially occurred in the non-profit uh, social services and the mental health organizations uh, where the public interest was involved. So, here for the interest of these uh, uh, the public or you can say the customers or you can say the users uh, and for those uh, these particular the social uh, keeping in mind that is our organization is working for the people. Our organization is working for the social services and the uh, helping uh, for example, the mental health organizations. So, therefore, if there is another mental health organization or any organization NGO is there which is non-profit organization and there is it is for the social services then definitely in that case they can work together. So, community organizations collaborated to achieve the greater effectiveness and the better use of the scare resources are there. So, they, uh, here this collaboration is for, for the uh, betterment of the society is there. Now, whenever we are talking about this betterment of this uh, society then definitely in that case we will talking about that is uh, how organizations can collaborated. So, performance measures for the partnership are the loosely defined and the problems are uh, received through the discussion and the dialogues are there. So, therefore, in that case it is the um, uh, always the those are the uh, parameters uh, which will be measured. Uh, so, what is the outcome? For example, when we are talking about the mental health organizations, what is the outcome? That is the betterment of the society taking care of the people. So, therefore, the performance will be measured how many people are feeling better now. So, this is the parameters are there. So, the problems are to be resolved through the discussion and dialogues that is how the organization should work together. From adversaries to partners, the changing characteristics of the inter-organizational relationships are there. The traditional orientation of the adversaries was there, that is the low dependence were there uh, and uh, the organizations they were having the suspicious a a approach to each other and because of the competitions are there. And uh, here they will always uh, uh, seeing that is the as a rivalry to each other. Well, detailed performance measures were the closely monitored uh, in the case of this uh, mm, uh, uh, these uh, traditional orientation were there. So, uh, always it is the narrow down, narrow down the uh, appraisal or narrow down of the measurement of the performance was there. And then the focus was on the price efficacy on profits was there by these uh, particular in case of the adversaries. And uh, here we will find that is the, uh, the uh, limited uh, information and feedback was there about uh, your competitors. Now, this uh, there I always if there is any conflict there will be the legal resolution will be there. Uh, there was nothing like counseling or interaction or you know, may, making face to face uh, the solving the problem rather than always the approach was that is taking the legal action was there. Minimal involvement and uh, upfront uh, investment was there. 
So, therefore, in that case it was the always it has been seen that is the, the uh, both the competitors or the rivalers uh, they were having the minimum involvement and uh, they were the uh, uh, joint uh, there will be very minimum uh, investment was there. Uh, short term contracts were there, they were the separate resources was there and contract limiting the uh, lim relationship was there. So, relationship between the, these two partners as per the contract only. So, when we understand the traditional orientation, traditional orientation was into the silos, it was into the isolation and this traditional uh, this uh, uh, orientation which was making them to uh, limit themselves uh, within the premises. While now we will see the new orientation that is in the current time how these adverse interorganizational relationships have been changed. Earlier there was suspicion, but nowadays they trust each other and addition of values to the both the sides are there. So, therefore, in that case uh, it is uh, there was only the one person was interested to take the more profit, now the mutual benefits are there and mutual concern are there and therefore, as a result of which both the parties are highly committed to each other. Loose performance measures were there and problems discussed are there. So, it is not that uh, strict and uh, um, uh, the uh, hunter style uh, uh, appraisal rather than it is the uh, problems were discussed uh, that is the our performance is coming uh, low then in that case what steps are to be taken. Equity, fair dealing and the both the profit were there and this is making them that is the both the partners um, organizations uh, they were having their equity and uh, uh, profit equal profit were there. There was nothing like that is the profit was not uh, uh, only shared by the one person at the higher side and other, other organization is sharing the profit at the lower side. Then in when we are talking about the current era where the artificial intelligence is there. So, these electronic linkages to share the key information, problem feedback and the people on site that, were, that was there. Environments in partners product design uh, and the production shared resources were there and the long term contracts were there and as a result of which uh, it is not that is the organizations are restricted to the contract period and within the contract only rather than they were looking for the long term inter organizational relationships are there. Business assistance beyond the contract is there and they are supporting to each other beyond the premises. This figure you know, it shows that that is the how does there is a change in the mindset uh, of the organizations uh, and other organizations maintaining the in, uh, uh, independence the new model is based on interdependence and the trust is there. Here the another parameter which we are supposed to take care is population ecology. So, population ecology perspective differs from the other uh, perspectives uh, because uh, it focuses on organizational diversity and adaptation within a population of organization is there. So, a population is a set of organizations engaged in the similar activities with the similar patterns of resources utilization and the outcomes is there and that we can say it is a nature of industry, it is a sort of uh, industry uh, we can say and therefore, in that case uh, this organizational diversity and adaptation uh, within the population of the organization that will have the different perspective. According to the population ecology view when looking at an organizational population as a whole the changing environment determines which organizations survive or fail. The assumption is that individual organizations uh, suffer from structural inertia and find it difficult to adapt to environmental changes there. So, therefore, uh, here it becomes very important that is the individual organizations they will be having a particular understanding and the structure inertia and then it is find difficult to the environmental changes are there. So, what hinders the adaptation? Now, in spite of all these uh, prospects uh, there, there is a found to be uh, there uh, here there, there are the certain hinders are there. So, why then organization inter organizational relationship is not that much encouraged. So, therefore, uh, here the Michael Hinman and John Freeman uh, they uh, the uh, originators of the population ecology model of organization argue that there are many limitations on the ability of organizations to change. And so, uh, still 
many organizations they are following the traditional view and they are not going for the modern view is there the limitations come from the uh, the heavy investment to in plants equipment and the specialized personnel and limited information then the established viewpoint of the decision makers the organizations own successful history and that justifies the current procedures uh, and the difficulty of changing the corporate culture is there so they, these organizations they are finding it difficulty because the they uh, the decision makers, uh, and they, they are having their own viewpoint. This viewpoint is supposed to be developed by the understanding with and interaction with each other. But uh, when a particular organization is having the strong its viewpoint, then definitely in that case, the joining the other organization, developing the inter-organizational relationship, uh, that will be a problem. So, this is the main hinders is there and it is the acceptance or readiness to change. The organization's own successful history that justifies the current procedures are there. And uh, when organizations are successful, then they say that what, what they are practicing, that is the best one and that is why they are successful. So, there is no question of changing them and whenever you are making the collaboration with others, you have to little bit change and the difficulty of changing corporate culture is, is becoming a, a major issue. True transformation is a rare and unlikely event in the face of all these barriers and therefore, uh, here we will find that is the, it becomes very important uh, that is the uh, where, where these whatever has been the investment, heavy investments is made um, by these uh, organizations, uh, then limited information is there and the organization's own successful history and uh, that justifies. So, therefore, uh, there is uh, the transformation is, uh, uh, is required, getting this convinced is becomes uh, difficult because they are having the past uh, that record where they have been with a highly successful and therefore, the unlikely uh, they will face all these uh, barriers and the population ecology model is developed from the theories of the natural selection in biology and the evolution and selection of the terms are used to refer to the underlying behavioral processes are there. So, therefore, in that case uh, your ecosystem the organization's ecosystem and that, that is having a particular uh, model and therefore, the changing that on the basis of the biology and evolution uh, that will be really very difficult. So, the population ecology model is concerned with the organizational forms. Uh, organizational form is an organization specific technology, structure, products, goals and personal. Now, when there is a when we see that is a, a every organization is having the specific technology and uh, uh, structure, then they, uh, they will not uh, like to change and which can be selected or uh, rejected by the environment. So, once it has been selected, then definitely it will be very difficult uh, um, uh, for getting this uh, rejection uh, by the environment. So, each new organization tries to find a niche, there is a domain of unique environmental resources and needs are there, so sufficient to support it. So, if you want to make the changes, then definitely you require a certain uh, niche domain and that domain of unique and environmental um, uh, uh, domain that will only help. The niche is usually small in the early stages of an organization. Uh, but may increase in size over time if the organization is successful and therefore, in that case this particular domain which in the beginning is very small, but it is having the long impact and when the when this uh, uh, domain specific domain unique uh, environmental resource when it getting the success, then the organization becomes big. So, if the organization does not find an appropriate niche, it will uh, decline and may perish also. So, therefore, uh, to grow of the uh, growth of the organization, it is very necessary that the organization is having that particular niche and particular domain of uh, unique environmental resources and then only then the organization will grow and uh, will come to the successful level. Now, here you will see from the viewpoint of a single firm, luck chance and randomness play important parts in survival. New products and ideas are the continually being proposed by the both entrepreneurs and the large organizations, but which idea and uh, which uh, uh, product which will be developed that will be decided by the customers. So, whether these ideas and organizational forms survive or fail is often a matter of chance, whether external circumstances happen to support them or not and especially the customers are concerned. So, growing bigger when it is successful and the size of this niche order domain practices that will be increasing. Process of ecological change. 
the population ecology model assumes that the new organizations are always appearing in the population and as organizational populations are continually undergoing change. The process of change in the population occurs in three stages, variation, selection and retention. So, variation means uh, the appearance of the new diverse forms in a population of organizations and these new organizational forms are initiated by the entrepreneurs are there. So, always uh, you know, whenever the population increases and it starts with the um, organizational, so which are the many of them are initiated by the entrepreneurs are there and these are established by the venture capital by the large corporations are set up by the government seeking to provide the new services are there and therefore uh, with the variety and variation um, this particular process of ecological change will start. Second one is the selection. Selection refers to whether a new organizational form is suited to the environment and can survive. Now, uh, only a few variations are selected uh, in by the environment and the survive over the long time is there. And the third one is the retention is the, the, the preservation and the institutionalization of the selected organizational forms. So, certain technologies, products and services are highly valued by the environment, the retained organizational form may become a dominant part of the environment is there. So, in the process of ecological change of the variation, selection and retention, uh, the large number of variations appear in the population of the organization whenever we are talking about the uh, ecosystems. So, the ecological changes are there or the increase in the population of a particular industry is concerned, then you will find and it is through most of them are through the entrepreneurs. Selection of some organizations find a successful niche and the survive is there and uh, naturally uh, the environment uh, will uh, accept those populations. Uh, are organizations uh, uh, which are having a successful niche and they are able to survive. And the retention will be only those who will be able to face the competition, grow large and become institutionalized in the environment is there. And therefore, once the environment friendly organization becomes, then it goes, it becomes the large organization is there. So, what should be the strategy for the survival is to be there, organizational struggles for the existence uh, because of the competitions. So, generally strategy is wide niche or domain, whatever your niche, every organization has to identify that is what is the its, uh, niche or the domain area is there. Because in the competition, uh, where you will be successful only when you will focus on your domain area and domain area has been well accepted by the external environmental factors. So, a broad range of products and services to a broad market will be there. Specialist strategies are a narrow range of goods or services. So, therefore, in that case, you are not going for the wide range rather than you are going for the narrow range. Uh, and starts with the small one and the goods or services that serve a narrow market is there and then slowly and slowly with the period of time you grow. Institutionalism, the institutional perspective provides yet another view of the interorganizational relationships uh, and the institutional perspective describes how organizations survive and succeed through congruence between the organization and the expectations of the environment is there. So, as I mentioned that is a, it is becoming very, very important that is the uh, whether the your ecosystem is accepting you or not and therefore, to get the acceptance from the ecosystem and uh, this congruence uh, for the survive, it becomes very, very important. So, institutional perspective that is the uh, only when there, there is uh, acceptance is there and there the expectations of the environment have been fulfilled. This is composed of the norms and values. Every organization is working on a particular norms and values. As I mentioned, it is for the retention is concerned. So, retention will be possible only when your practices are well accepted by the others. So, uh, values from the stakeholders. For example, the customers, investors, associates, boards, uh, other organizations, government, community and so on and therefore, in that case you will find this is the institutionalism that will be working. Thus, the institutional view believes that organizations set up structures and processes to please the outsiders and these activities come to take on rule like the status in organizations. Mm, legitimacy in organization sections are desirable, proper and appropriate are there, then definitely there will be always this institutionalism that will be established. The institutional similarity many aspects of structure and behavior uh, may be targeted uh, towards the environmental acceptance rather than towards the internal technical efficiency is there and therefore, this institutional similarity and that will be working. So, here you will you have to see that is the whenever you are talking about the institutionalism, thus the institutionalism and that making a particular structure and behavior is there and here is the role of the organization structure. Now, 
because the population is increasing, new entrepreneurs or the new organizations are uh, entering and then you are having your niche or domain and therefore, in that case, your, the, that niche and domain will be having a typical structure. So, what type of the organization structure that will be making you the more successful that may be targeted towards the environmental acceptance and that we have to take into consideration for the internal environmental factors and the external environmental factors are there and that is for the our employees and outside outside of the organization and that is the government, customers and uh, society. So, therefore, it, it should be accepted rather than the uh, rejected by the government, society uh, and other stakeholders. So, that towards the uh, internal technical efficiency we have to focus. Now, this institutional similarity uh, that is uh, that thus are categorized by the forces that cause the organizations in a similar population to, to look like one another is there. So, it is called the institutional uh, lemorphism. So, in the case of the in, in institutional isomorphism, uh, in the academic uh, literature is the emergence of a common structure and the approach among uh, uh, the organizations in the same field is there. So, isomorphism is the process uh, and that cause one unit in a population to uh, resemble the other units. So, therefore, one organization when enters into a, that a particular institution or the industries, then in that case uh, that organization of the similar nature of, of the business and that should have the resembles with the other organization. So, it cannot be the very different from the existing organization. However, you can have the different resources and then the mechanization of resources or the modernization of resources. So, that will be different, but uh, because of the maintaining the proper environmental factors in especially the external environmental factors that face the same set of the environmental conditions exactly how does the it increasing and therefore, isomorphism will be only when possible when you are entering into an organization in a population to resemble other units uh, that face the same set of the economical conditions are there. Now, this institutional adaptation, uh, three mechanisms for institutional adaptation is there, mimetic forces, coercive forces and the normative forces are there. So, mimetic forces result from the responses to the uncertainty, coercive forces which stem for the political influence and the normative forces which result from the common training and professionalism within the organization is there. So, here which is uh, here whenever we are talking about uh, the institutionalization is to be established, then you have to focus on that is what is the, uh, there is the uncertainty, uncertainty because whether it will be survival or it will not be survival, whether it will be accepted or it will not be accepted. So, therefore, there is an environment of uncertainty. So, the coercive forces will stem from the political influence and therefore, in that case, uh, we have to see that is uh, what are the um, different uh, uh, factors are there uh, which are making this political influence and the normative forces result from the common training and professionalism is there. So, what type of the common training and professionalism is to be provided that we have to see. So, uh, here uh, you will find there is the institutional adaptation, how it goes with the mimetic course and normative is there. So, the reason they become similar events are certain innovation visibility and the example is culturally supported re-engineering and the benchmarking is there. So, it becomes very important that is the whenever you are entering into an, uh, in a such an environment where you are required to develop uh, uh, your organization and survive and growth is there you are entering. So, the culturally supported uh, re-engineering is required. So, whatever the external uh, and uh, organizational culture has been developed, uh, so your area initiative that should be have been supported by both in uh, internal and external environmental factors and that will create the benchmarking practices. So, these benchmarking practices will be created only when, when you are you are having the type of these uh, um, the adaptation uh, with the culture, the practices and the characteristics of the institutionalization or that is about the organization systems. So, coercive will be the dependence uh, that is the political law rules and the sanctions are there and uh, here e it will be the legal pollution controls and school regulations are, are there. So, here it will be more difficult because you, you have to get the legal compliances, you have to get the political law rules and sanctions are there. So, e e it will be giving you the uh, regulations which you have to take care while the normative is there 
So, normative means norms, norms are to be formed, uh, a culture is to be developed. So, naturally there will be certain uh, guidelines for the duty, uh, certain obligations which are to be performed, professionalism is to be there for the certification, accreditation and the um, moral responsibility will be accounting standards and the consulting training will be there. So, these are these normative um, institutionalized uh, systems which will be adopting. So, here now, whenever we are talking about uh, these um, uh, the mimetic forces, so most organizations, especially the business organizations, they face the great uncertainty and not clear to senior executives exactly what products, services, technologies or management practices will achieve the desired goal and because you are entering and uh, sometimes the goals themselves are not clear. So, here uh, in the case of these uh, co coercive forces, all organizations are subject to pressure both formal and informal is there uh, from the government, regulatory agencies and other important organizations in the environment especially those are which are in a company's dependent is there. So, therefore, there will be the external environmental forces. Normative forces will be there, organizations change according to the institutional view is normative forces. Normative forces are pressured to achieve standards of professionalism and to adopt techniques uh, that are considered by the professional community to be up to date and effective is there. So, institutional view and the organizational design. So, institutional view also sees organizations too as having two essential dimensions, uh, technical and institutional. So, technical dimensions are day to day work, uh, technology, operating requirements and governed by the norms and rationality of the efficiency is there. While the institutional is there visible to the public, governed by the expectations of the public is there and therefore, this has to be taken care of. So, now what I will conclude is this, that is the design essentials. So, whenever you are making these uh, organizations, you have to see uh, in the population where do you stand uh, and what you want uh, to achieve. For example, you are a, at the entry level. So, then in that case to that population uh, for the industries uh, uh, that you are working in an, an environment of uncertainty. So, if you are working in the environment of uncertainty and that particular design has to be there when it is become the course you when the external pressure is very high then in that case you are uh, you you are supposed to design your uh, uh, organization structure accordingly and uh, when you have become the successful now you have to develop the norms and rules and then you have to follow the standard parameters so there have been evolution in interorganizational relationships organizations operate within an ecosystem is there and the four perspectives uh, have been developed to explain relationships among the organizations so collaboration is an emerging alternative to resource dependence is there. So, ultimately um, what is required is that is the we are developing uh, a particular niche domain and that niche domain can be, have to be supported by the other industries and therefore, that collaboration, collaboration is becoming the very, very important. New organizations feel niche are left open by the established companies are there and then the institutional perspective uh, notes that uh, inter-organizational relationships are the, uh, they are the shaped by the legitimacy as well as the products or services are there and therefore, in that case you will find that is the institutional perspective that is becoming the uh, main important role plays a very important role in the interorganizational relationships are there. This is a case study about the exam global incorporation it was a young associated a prestigious law firm. He happened to glimpse as a client's bill for a case he was working on and it was only the February and to already we would build an amount equal to my salary for the year. Uh, said the realize that the most of the money uh, big law firms bring in goes to the uh, defray overhead expenses or into the pockets of the firm's pet partners. The model seemed uh, broken to me. Uh, Harsh explained about uh, this idea about a new kind of a law firm. Along with partner Eric Gutel, where Harris founded XCM Global Incorporation, XCM provides the legal services to the uh, corporations on as a needed basis, typically charging fees that are far less than the traditional traditional uh, law firms are there. So, exam can change less because it uh, does not have to compensate uh, highly uh, paid uh, partners and the company's lawyers often work uh, from home or at a client's offices. Helping to keep uh, the overhead to a minimum, exam has a staff of around uh, 220 lawyers who take temporary assignments which corporate clients. Uh, so, they are employed uh, full time by the exam and get uh, benefits, but no pay between the assignments are there. Harris and Gutel found there were many highly trained lawyers who wanted in different kind of life and therefore, more time with the family, time to try their hand at writing a book 
or the just a break from the growing pace. So Joe Risco, for example, says he wanted to chill out and try something different. And Risco's first assignment was a nine-month project uh, uh, for a Goldman Sachs. So although um, it took a while for the Risco to get used to the prestige disparately between working for a big well-known firm and uh, working uh, for Exam, he says he loves the broad range of experience he is getting. So Exam has scored a number of the Fortune 500 companies as clients, including the Cisco system, GE, Google, Xerox corporations, and so many. So the model may, makes a lot of sense, says the Don Liu of Xerox. So Exam is not trying to uh, displace to the top law firm to for the high-end work such as the major merger or a make a break in lawsuits. But for the more modest uh, on the project, this uh, new type of law firm he fills the bill and cuts by the 25 to 50 percent is there. So Exam is one of a number of startups using this variation on the traditional law firm, some of the primary with smaller business that do not have any house in legal uh, departments, while the others aim from the projects with the large corporate clients. But providing services as a needed project basis as a lower cost to their new organizations are changing, challenging the great big law, law firms have and corporate businesses there. This is the research paper, Ecological System Approaches to Sustainability in Organizational Development, Emerging Trends in Environmental and Societal Accounting Reporting System. Please uh, see that is the, uh, you, you go through these uh, paper and uh, other papers from the journals and you also understand that what the research is going on and uh, what are the findings are there. Uh, this is a book, Evolutionary Process and Organizational Adaptation. This book uh, by the Daniel and Leventhal and this book will help you to understand more about uh, detailing about this particular concept is there. So uh, finally, I would like to mention these references as usual. That is, please go through these references and develop uh, uh, the more and more uh, understanding about these particular uh, institutional relationships. Thank you.